All right, so methylene blue is one of those compounds that's been getting a lot of attention lately. But most of the information out there is either too surface level or too complicated to actually be useful. So today I'm going to break down exactly what it is, how it works in your body, and whether or not it makes sense for you to use it. So first things first, if you've watched my previous video on NAD Plus and cellular energy, this is going to build directly on that. And if you haven't watched that, I would definitely suggest you go back so you can understand exactly how your body produces energy. Because methylene blue works on the same system, just in a completely different way. But before we go any further, just a quick note. This is not medical advice, and I suggest that before you put anything into your body, you always consult with a licensed physician. So let's start with what methylene blue actually is. This is the first synthetic drug ever used in medicine. It was actually created back in 1876 by a German chemist who originally made it as a textile dye. Then, in 1891, a scientist named Paul Elrich figured out it could be used to treat malaria, and it became one of the first drugs ever given to humans for medical purposes. Today, it's an FDA-approved drug for treating a blood oxygen disorder, and it's on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines. So, this isn't some new biohacking discovery. It's actually been used in medicine for almost 150 years. What's new about it is people are now using it for mitochondrial support and for its cognitive benefits. Now, like I said, if you've watched my NAD Plus video, you'll remember that about 90% of your ATP comes from something called the electron transport chain inside your mitochondria. NADH carries electrons to the chain, and the chain uses those electrons to make ATP, which is the energy that your body runs on. If you haven't seen that video, I definitely recommend watching it first, because this will all make a lot more sense. So the electron transport chain has four stations. They're called complex one, two, three, and four. And electrons pass through each station in sequence. And as they move through, the chain pumps protons across the membrane. That proton gradient is what actually drives ATP production. But here's where the problems start. Two of those stations, complex one and complex three, are where most of the issues happen as you get older. These two stations have the most complicated structures, the most moving parts. So more moving parts, more complicated means more chances for something to go wrong. What happens is electrons start to leak out at those stations. And when an electron leaks out, it doesn't just disappear. It actually causes damage inside of the mitochondria. That damage makes the station leak even more electrons, which causes more damage. It's a cycle that gets worse over time. And this is one of the main reasons your energy goes down as you age. So what causes this leakage to get worse? Well, age is the big one. The stations become less efficient and the parts wear out. Mitochondrial membrane damage plays a role, which is what SS31 addresses, if you've seen that video. Chronic inflammation can accelerate it and metabolic dysfunction can overwhelm the system. So some of this stuff is affected by lifestyle, but other parts you really can't control because of aging. And this is all the broken machinery I talked about in the NAD Plus video. Now you know where it breaks. So here's where methylene blue comes in. Methylene blue can grab electrons before they leak out at complex one and complex three, and it carries them past those damaged stations and delivers them further down the chain. The electrons still get where they need to go, they just take a different route. Think of your electron transport chain like an assembly line in a factory. Raw materials come in at one end, and finished product comes out on the other. Complex one and complex three are two stations on that assembly line that have gotten worn out over time. So parts keep falling off the conveyor belt at those stations. And every part that falls off causes damage to the other equipment in the factory. So methylene blue is like installing a bypass conveyor that routes around those two worn out stations so parts can still make it to the end of the line. And the result is more electrons complete the journey more ATP gets produced, and less damage is happening inside of the mitochondria. Now, here's something important that you need to understand about methylene blue. With this compound, more is not better. At low doses, it's definitely going to help your mitochondria produce more energy. 
but at high doses, it actually causes damage. The benefits show up around 0.5 to 4 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. And if you go above 10 milligrams per kilogram, the benefits start to disappear. Then above 50 milligrams per kilogram, you get the opposite effect. So this is one of those compounds where you definitely need to make sure you get the dosage right. Okay, so now that you understand how methylene blue actually works, let me share some of the research. There was a memory study that they did in 2016 with 26 healthy adults between the ages of 22 and 62. They gave them a single dose of 280 milligrams. And the result was a 7% increase in memory retrieval. And brain scans actually showed increased activity in areas related to attention and memory. Those effects showed up within one hour. There was also another study in 2014 with 42 people who had claustrophobia. They took 260 milligrams daily. And at the one month follow-up, they showed improved ability to manage their fear response. They actually did a skin study from the University of Maryland in 2017, where they tested methylene blue on skin cells from donors, including people over 80 years old. The cells showed improved function and reduced aging markers, and they even saw increased collagen and elastin production in their skin models. Now, I want to be honest about the limitations here. Most of these studies are short term. The Alzheimer's trials that they did had mixed results, and we don't have good long term data on methylene blue yet. But the research is absolutely promising. It's just not definitive because we haven't started testing it for this type of cognitive function. So who is methylene blue actually for? Well, if your mitochondria are already running well, the bypass doesn't add much value. It's like the SS31 example from the NAD Plus video. If the engine isn't broken, a bypass doesn't do much for you. The people who would benefit most are those dealing with age-related energy decline, fatigue that persists even when training, nutrition, and sleep are dialed in, brain fog, and generally people over 40 whose energy isn't what it used to be. If you're 25, you're sleeping well, training hard, eating right, and you feel good, you're probably not going to notice much from methylene blue. But if you're 45 and your energy isn't what it used to be, even though you're doing everything right, this might be worth looking at. Now, let's talk about safety because there are some important things we need to know before you consider using methylene blue. The first one, and probably the most important, is the G6PD deficiency. You see, G6PD is an enzyme that protects your red blood cells. Some people are born with a genetic condition where they just don't produce enough of this enzyme, which basically means their red blood cells are more vulnerable to damage. And this matters because methylene blue needs this enzyme to work properly in your body. In people who don't have enough of it, methylene blue can actually damage their red blood cells. The red blood cell breaks apart, and that causes serious problems. So I'm sure you're wondering, well, how do I know if I have this condition? <laughs> well, about 4 to 7% of the U.S. population and about 12% of African-American men, 4% of Asian men, and it's much more common in people with ancestry from Africa, the Mediterranean, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia. This pattern exists because the condition actually provides some protection against malaria. The problem is most people who have this don't know they have it, but a simple blood test can tell you if you have it. So if you have ancestry from any of those regions, you definitely should consider getting tested before using methylene blue. It's a simple blood test and it could prevent a serious problem. The second safety issue is the interaction with certain medications. Methylene blue affects how your body processes serotonin. Combining it with certain medications can cause a dangerous reaction called serotonin syndrome. The medications you need to avoid combining methylene blue include SSRIs like Prozac, Zoloft, and Lexapro, SNRIs like Effexor and Cymbalta, MAOIs, tramadol, and fentanyl. If you're on any of these medications, absolutely don't take methylene blue without talking to your doctor first. Now, there are a few other things that you need to know. You should not use methylene blue if you're pregnant because it can cause birth defects. If you're breastfeeding, you need to make sure that you wait eight days after use. And if you have any type of kidney problems, definitely use methylene blue with caution. Now, for the side effects that are normal and expected, your urine is going to turn blue or green. 
your tongue and mouth will turn blue temporarily, and it can interfere with your sleep if you take it too late in the day. So last thing, let's talk about quality because this absolutely matters too. Methylene blue is also used in fish tanks and industrial settings. Products made for those uses can contain heavy metals like arsenic and lead. Those are not safe for human consumption. So when you're looking for a source, you absolutely need to make sure that you're looking for USP grade certification. You should also look for companies that do third party testing, heavy metal testing, and you need to make sure that they come in glass bottles and they're manufactured in a GMP certified facility. This is very important for methylene blue. So a simple rule is if it's not manufactured in a GMP certified facility and it's not USP certified, it's probably not good for you to consume. Now, for the practical protocol, as far as dosing is concerned, you're gonna to wanna to start with five to 10 milligrams per day to see how you respond. The general range for dosing is 0.5 to one milligram per kilogram of body weight. And the studies showing cognitive benefits used around four milligrams per kilogram, which is about 280 milligrams for a 155 pound person. Most people start very low and work up from there. So take your time with this. Don't just full send it because you definitely want to see how you respond to the compound. Okay, now let me explain where this fits in if you've been following any of my other content. If you watched my NAD Plus video, you'll remember that I laid out a cellular energy protocol. NAD Plus provides the fuel, which is the electrons. SS31 repairs the mitochondrial membrane. MOTC optimizes how efficiently the mitochondria run. Creatine stores ATP for quick use, and methylene blue bypasses the damaged parts of the electron transport chain. You don't need all of this, but understanding how they work helps you decide what makes best sense for your situation. And if you're struggling with the age-related symptoms that we talked about earlier, I definitely think that starting your stack with methylene blue, SS31, NAD+, would be a great way to get a boost to your mitochondrial function and help you with energy production. But like I say in every video, the foundation always comes first. Training, nutrition, sleep, stress management. These compounds are all gonna enhance that foundation. They don't replace it. So if your sleep is bad, your diet's off, and you're not training, no compound or peptide is going to fix that for you. Okay, check it out. If you want help staying up to date on peptide research, safety protocols, and where people are finding safe sources, there's actually a link in the description to join my free school community. All you have to do is just create a free account, request access, and we'll get you all the support that you need to make sure that you're doing all this stuff in a safe way. And one more thing, make sure you drop your questions in the comments and subscribe to the channel if you want more real world insights on supplements, peptides, and proven methods to get lean and strong the right way. I hope this video was valuable for you and I'll see you next week for another Supplement Spotlight.